Hey guys, Dead Ant here, and we are back in Minecraft, but not for a normal episode of survival. We are going to be taking a look at my progression through Minecraft. So, I'm not a long time Minecraft player. I've actually only had Minecraft for a few years, and the first couple of years of having Minecraft, I had no idea what to do at all. So, most of what I was building was just a basic house, basic you know, wheat farm and exploring. I didn't actually know what I was doing in Minecraft at all. But in the last year I've actually learnt quite a bit and my skills have developed both redstone and building. So today we're going to look at what one year and over 500 hours in Minecraft had turned into. So the first world we're looking at, I started roughly at the start of 2020. So, a bit over a year ago now. And, well, <laughs> you can see the building style is quite random. Um, everything is a bit everywhere. But this is the first world where I actually started to learn different contraptions, redstone mechanics, and other features in Minecraft. As well as experimenting with some more unusual builds. So let's go see what I've done here. <laughs> this is my town. Um, I built this in a village because I thought, you know, villages have stuff, so why not build it here? And yeah, it's uh, quite ugly, I might say. You know, it's got the, the wall around it. Let's see, this redstone actually works. Wow. I'm impressed. I originally built something here and the redstone was exposed and oh it was terrible design. The worst redstone you've ever seen but is the first thing I did so this redstone door isn't too bad. It's pretty quick and it closes unevenly but that's okay. So this base I kind of had the vision of an aquarium to begin with. So I do have the inside here being an aquarium and you can actually go in and out. This is my pitiful storage system. Not much available and I didn't even sort it properly. And then we've got the uh, the inside outside aquarium thing here as well. It's a bit cramped, a bit ugly, very strange block palettes. Um, yeah, this is terrible. And one random armor stand. And in the aquarium as well, we've got our soul sand elevator, which takes up into this glass floating canopy thing. I don't know what I was going to do with this. I couldn't be bothered changing the uh, the cobblestone out. And yeah, this thing is pretty pretty random, pretty ugly. But I do have a launch pad here. So, I'm going to ignore some of this for now, and we'll go over here. This was one of the first redstone contraptions I built. This is a, a drowned converter. So, I have some zombies, uh, a zombie spawner down below, and the zombies get sent up here, and they get turned into drowned. Because when I built this, converted drowned actually dropped tridents. So, I thought, hey, I'll get some tridents, which I'll never use. And I have a little button here, which drops them down. And I don't even have a killer, it was just a manual kill on them this way. And you get all the drops there. One of the first mob farms I've ever built. Or, the first mob farm I ever built. I've come a long way since then, that's for sure. And this was before I fully understood the differences between Java and Bedrock. So this is Bedrock Edition, and this is me trying to build some Java farms. So this is meant to be an iron farm here, and this is just a mob farm. These never worked at all. It's just a complete failure. These guys have probably just spawned and fallen in. Um, but yeah, Java, Bedrock, completely different. This is what I learned here. 
So one of the big things I do now as well is the Vilda Trading Hall. And this is my first one. And this is a bit of a free roam trading hall that just... I got some things from it, like I got my books. But this is a really, really, really bad trading hall. And there are some other really basic farms that I've built, but nothing too interesting. Again, this is me learning resto mechanics. Even something as simple as this, which is a redstone dropper system. So everything goes below the chest and I have to hit this lever to make it go into the chest. And this is all manually operated. Like, what was I thinking? <laughs> but I did come up, well not come up with, but I did build some automatic ones and they kind of work. Yeah. Terrible. So if we continue over to this way, you can see I was also trying to build Java farms here. This is meant to be a Java creeper farm, which, yeah, things do not spawn in bedrock. This was such a waste of time. Nothing ever spawns in these. It's just terrible. And then this is another villager iron farm that doesn't work. Yeah, and this world is back when iron farms did not work at all in bedrock. So this farm got like 20 or 30 iron in total. You know, all this work and effort for nothing. And this is probably the best and most successful thing that this version had to offer. And this is my gold farm. Okay. Oh, I'm almost dead. Gonna fly. I'm not wearing any armor at the moment, so. But yeah, this actually works, and this design is still applicable in today's version. So, gold and XP's galore. That's one thing I did right, but I just built it in a random spot. So, this is stage one of my Minecraft learning experience in the last year. I'm not sure how many hours this world has into it. But there's still a fair few, you know, 500 hours in the whole year, or over 500 hours. This is still a lot of hours, but it's very inefficient hours, very ugly hours. <laughs> a lot of hours spent not knowing what I'm doing. So let's go into my next world to see how I improved. So we are now in the next world that I built. And this world started right when the new nether update came. So there's all the new blocks and I wanted to see what I could do. And already you can see I did not too bad actually. So I went for a bit of a castle build in this one and I'm quite happy with how I developed my detailing skills. So it's still not the best, it's still a bit flat, um, too much of the same palette, but I started using different blocks to make it a bit more interesting. Um, so my building is definitely improved in this. And of course, we have a door and it closes pretty much at the same time, I think. Yep. So the door's improved as well, which is great. And I'm pretty happy with how compressed, condensed I did it on the top. There's no exposed stuff. It's not bad, not bad. But yeah, this build was a big improvement from the last world. I've got a much better organized shulker, uh, not shulker, storage system. Um, I think I was working on like a big underground mining thing there, but that's not really interesting at all. Start a bit of a shulker storage. A very, very, very bad smelter. I'm not going to call it a super smelter because it's not. Uh, this thing barely works. It's it's terrible. And then upstairs, we've got a map 
showing the area. So I don't know where that one's gone, that one's missing. But that's the uh, the castle there. And you can see my farms around the place. And let's go check out what farms I have built and which ones were successful. So to begin with, we've got the staple sugarcane farm. This is a style that I really liked and I've built quite a few of them in other worlds. This is my stacked uh, sugarcane farm, automatic, and everything comes down the bottom here. Not the greatest rates, you know, it is only five on each side, so it's not a huge amount, but it is stackable and it's quite small in a simple design. I also started with some melon farms. Again, it works, but it's not a great system. And I also discovered chunk borders in this. So this one had a track going on, uh, but it is right on a chunk border. And this minecart would stop all the time and I wouldn't get the drops from it. So you'll see that kind of come up in the next world with chunk borders and chunk alignment. What is going on with that block? It's very strange. Hmm. So the same concept as the other one, except this time I've got two portals, which increases the amount you can get. And I've got a good storage system down the bottom as well. So all the gold going into here. And why not splash out on a gold floor? And then these guys are for trading the emeralds to, or the flesh to for emeralds. So, again, I'm putting the beds in with them. Um, that is not something you need to do, and I didn't really understand villagers' trading systems. Um, but, it works. See, my main base area is really not organized at all. I've got a random castle and a couple of random farms around it. So there's no connectivity. That's something I really didn't have any clue what I was dealing with there. It was still just random builds next to each other. And then I've got more farms over this way. So this is when iron farms actually worked. Hooray! So this is the first successful working iron farm I built. Um, not my design again. Oh, doors. But yeah actually able to get iron and bedrock for the first time through an iron farm. This update was a really good update, that's for sure. And all this all this magma is because of the zombies. They you know, like to come in and gawk at the villages that are stuck in there. So that was an attempt to kill the zombies off. And then the last thing I have in this world is the trading halls. So again, I'm using the same kind of style that I did in my last world. Um, and I never really finished it. I've still got it blocked off to stop the zombies coming in. Um, but it is a little bit better. As in, they're actually locked in their rooms now. But it's still not a proper trading hall. Um, and it's still a bit weird in some ways. But it is... A trading system. How are they connecting? Are they? What the hell? Hold on. Oh, sorry. Uh, I don't, yeah, let's get out of here, Belvedere. So yeah, that is my nether update world. So this is when I really started to kind of get better at building the farms and also my building skills improved, you know, learning how to kind of break up the wall of patterns and all that sort of thing. But I still have more worlds to go through. So let's continue to the third world. So now we are at world number three. And this is the world where I think I made the most substantial improvements. You know, this one you're about to see, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now, it is far from complete. There's so much more that I could do in this world. Uh, but I kind of got lazy and I moved on to the next world. So, let's just go have a look. And here is the main town. 
So I experimented with quite a few different palettes here and I really wanted to kind of experiment and find different building styles that I could do and adding the attention to detail, you know, like that lift, you know, pulling up the cargo and you hear the hay bows and the barn and the masterpiece, the ship. I really am proud of this ship. First ship I've ever built and it just, yeah, I'm, I love it. It's great. Um, yeah, me trying to do random farms that don't work. So there's still some of that hanging around. I should have built it somewhere else. Kind of takes away from this. Um, but yeah, overall, this ship is one of my favorite builds. It just, yeah, did really enjoy building this. Um, you know, getting the right angles and the right block pallets and there's not much I would change at all. You know, this, this ship is, Probably how I'd build it now. You got my captain's quarters with the armor on either side, and then this nice pier. I do really like the pier or the dock here. So yeah, one of my favorite builds I've done, and this is when my Minecraft skills really took a step up. And we've got annoying particles, so let's turn them off. Okay, so the big elephant in the room is the pathway. I really couldn't figure out how I wanted to do the path here. I actually built a few different types and I just didn't like any of them. Pathways are still something that I struggle with. I can never... Uh, I'm in the middle of something, dude. Back off. Yeah, as I was saying, I can never figure out how I want the path and how to make it look good and you know, the street lanterns and all that sort of thing. So that's something I really failed at in this world. But this first storage room here is pretty, pretty good. Like all the little details I added, you know, using these um, scaffolding as like a, a storage rack and a pretty decent amount of storage room. You know, got a fair few chests. So this build, is one of the ones I'm also proud of. It's simple, but it's all developing these little skills. And same with the barn. I do like this barn. It's a classic red and white. We are, uh, well, I didn't actually finish that, but that's okay. So again, all the little details that I'm starting to add, just to give it those special touches. And the whole idea of this is that each one is a chunk. So you should know that Minecraft is chunk based and that's like the loading system. So I wanted to build the farms in each chunk. So each of these buildings is a different farm or you know, storage room, stuff like that, um, just to keep them contained. And I tried to do a different building style with each one. In hindsight, having them so close makes it a bit more difficult you know it's really hard to build completely when you have the building so close like this but it's a good experiment and these buildings here was more of a focus on like getting this front facade kind of looking good and experimenting with with the uh different blocks and seeing what i could do this one i never really finish off like that there isn't very nice um, and it is just you know a wall there's, there's nothing else done with this one but we've got the standard farms in here as well you've seen them and where would we be in minecraft these days without the iron farm so i've got the iron farm here and then this style is like an old ruin sort of style um, i quite like the interior garden here i think that turned out quite well and then using the different moss and other bricks, I think made this look like quite a nice build. Still not perfect, still plenty of things I could improve it, but way better than my previous ones. And of course, sorting systems. 
Yeah, this is back when I had to look up how to do them every time. And now, I know them off by heart. <laughs> and then the last building in the town is the super smelter. My first actual super smelter. Uh, do we have any materials in here? We do not. Um, let me see. Ah, I've got cobblestone. So this thing is really satisfying to watch. You ruined it, but still, yeah, I like this, uh, this super smelter. It's still not the best system with loading and unloading, but it does the job quite well. And it is pretty fast. Yeah, we're already getting plenty of the stone. And that's why that one didn't go. There we go. But yeah, first su super smelter, and again, experimenting with different blocks to get you know, the right palette and the right sort of style and design that I'm looking for. So this is the main town. Definitely not complete, still a lot to do in this world. But there's also a lot of other things I built this way. So you can see the big one is an actually working creeper farm. Not a good creeper farm, that's for sure. And then right next to it, we've got the gold farm again, or gold and XP farm. And this one, I half built a building around it. Um, <laughs> so this is me experimenting with concrete for the first time. I had never used concrete until this build. And I didn't really realize how much effort it took to make concrete. And I didn't you know, have a good idea of how to do it efficiently. But this was an attempt. And yeah, definitely needs improvement. And right next to this is my first good trading hall. So this one, if you watch Minecraft Bedrock stuff, you should be pretty familiar with the uh, type of trading hall this is. We got zombie curing in the middle, and then all the villages that drop in from the top around the outside. Also, incomplete. I could never figure it out how I was going to do this. Originally I was going to go with sandstone, so there's a lot of sandstone. And then I decided, oh, maybe I'll give white concrete a try. And they don't match together at all. And then the rest is just left as is, so. This is not a pretty build, but it is functional. I think this world has got the biggest jump between, you know, my different building skills. Not so much the farms. The farms are definitely good. Um, but they're very similar in skill as my last one and none of them are really my own kind of builds and designs properly um, but yeah building wise I definitely got a lot more skill in this world so let's go jump to the world which if you see my series you're probably pretty familiar with it now but it is my latest one and it is probably my most a uh, ambitious world I've tried so let's go check it out so if you're a regular viewer you'll be very familiar with this world but this is my latest survival world that I've been doing a series on and you can see we've stepped it up a level this is an ongoing series so it is not complete and I am still working on it I haven't made a new video for a while, so for those who are regular viewers, uh, sorry about that. I've been a little bit busy um, and focusing on some other things at the moment. But this is my first true mega build. It is a skyscraper that has the farms that I'll need inside of it. And the scale is way bigger than anything I've ever built before in Minecraft. Exterior wise, I haven't even worked on it at all. Um, there's a lot of ideas I have about how to do it. Um, but I was going to get the main building finished before I did the exterior. So heading to the tower now. So I get a bit of a lag spike around this area for some reason 
Um, I don't know why, but yeah. So for starters, we've got the piston door. This is a 4x4 that goes to the sides. And this is the first piston door that I built and designed completely on my own. And I can tell you, if you've never done it, <laughs> you probably don't know what it's like. And I'm a red zone amateur, so it took me a long time to kind of figure out the kinks and work out how to make this work. But work it does. It's a bit of a different design. Normally when people do a piston door, they have you know retracting in a different way and but this is what I wanted here and this is what I'm happy with. So now we have the first floor and the lobby. So I went with a bit of a nice clean white kind of fancy look. We've got a bit of a glass walkway down below with the armor stands lining the edges and this is my storage system in this world. So let's go downstairs to begin with. Oh, we do have a water elevator going all the way to the top. And this is my trading hall in this one. And this one is actually complete. So we've got all the trades you'll ever need. That's Larry. Larry's been around for a while. Pretty sure he's got like a thousand items on him. You know, he just decides to put random things in his mouth, so he could be causing a bit of lag. But yeah, we have got quite a decent villager trading hall. It is very large. Uh, these have all been zombie converted, so you're getting good rates. And anything I could ever want, I can get from these villagers. I've got just about every single book, well not everyone, but everyone that I will use, um, as well as all the other ones. And to get our emeralds, <laughs> we have plenty of pumpkins and melons. That's what I'm using to trade with the farmers to get the emeralds. So you can see that my uh, farms are a bit more efficient these days. <laughs> so let's go check them out to see how they are that good. Oh, I missed. So here is floor number one. And this is my pumpkin and melon farm on the right. So we've got one, two, three, four layers and it's double sided. And it's fully automatic. Every time a pumpkin grows, it gets knocked off into the water stream. And then same thing with the sugarcane farm. Although the sugarcane farm does have only the uh, observers on the ends so that when the end one grows it knocks them all down and that's just to save on having to use too many of the observers. Let's go see what farm I've got above that and it's not a farm it's a super smelter but not just one two. <laughs> what is that ticking? Where is that coming from? Oh, <laughs> I think that's here. Yep. That's the, uh, that's the bamboo farm. I thought I was going crazy then. I don't remember that. <laughs> but yeah, the next one is the bamboo farm. Um, I think this side I was going to do a kelp farm. We'll see. One day I'll continue the season and, uh, and we'll get building the next one. So these are the lower farms. And you can see I've stopped... I'm um, doing the layers here because I still have a lot more to do. Um, again, I'll get to it eventually. You know. And if this video gets a good amount of views, I might actually be inspired to keep going and continue this build. So here we have the kill chamber of the creeper farm. That's right, we have an actual creeper farm in bedrock. It's not a highly super crazy efficient one like the Java ones, but it provides me with more gunpowder than I need. So it is great for me. Yeah, we are getting creepers pretty much constantly coming through when we're in the right spots. Um, we might be able to see into it a little bit as we go up. 
but there are many, 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 many layers to the creeper farm. And that brings us up to the top of it. So the creeper farm is right below us. You can see the iron going here. And we've got the essential iron farm. This thing, you can't have a survival world without an iron farm. And there are future plans for some more builds on top of here. You know, we still got, what, 60 blocks <laughs> we can go up. Um, and I plan on using as many of those blocks as I can. You might think, oh, we're at the top of the tower. That's it. Well, there's more. We have to go all the way down. Here we go. So this is a real experiment for me. This build is not something I've ever done before. This was my first attempt at kind of like a natural sort of build. So this is my secret grotto. This is another experimentation in me trying to get my Minecraft building skills to that next level. So this is my tower and this is the latest evolution of my Minecraft skills. There's a little bit more in this world, but um, if you've seen the series, you'll know what they are. If you want to see me complete this tower, subscribe to the channel and go leave a comment down below. I do hope you guys have enjoyed seeing the evolution of my Minecraft skills. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and I'll see you all next time.